Today is December 20th, 2025, and if you care about space science, you need to understand something clearly. The most important part of an interstellar flyby is not the moment it happens. It is what the data says after the object has already passed, because that is when you stop guessing and you start measuring. Just 24 hours ago, the object known as 3I Atlas, also cataloged as C2025N1 depending on the database you follow, made its closest approach to Earth. That moment came and went without drama in the night sky for most people. No flash, no impact, no emergency. But the story did not end there. Right now, the object is already racing away, moving back into the dark outer solar system. And while the physical body is leaving, the data it left behind is doing the opposite. It is piling up, it is being processed, it is being cross-checked, and the picture forming from those numbers is not simple. As of today, estimates place 3i Atlas well beyond the range where casual telescopes can track it easily. It is moving fast enough that the word fast stops being meaningful. Speeds around tens of kilometers per second are not quick. They are a different class of motion, the kind of motion you see when an object is not bound to the sun. That matters because a bound comet behaves like a traveler on a loop. It comes in, swings around, and returns again someday, even if that someday is thousands of years. An interstellar visitor does not loop. A hyperbolic trajectory is the signature. It means the sun's gravity can bend the path, but it cannot capture it. The object is passing through once, and then it is gone. It will cross the orbits of the outer planets, fade into the background, and eventually become just another invisible grain moving between stars. So if you are watching this story unfold, you are watching a one-time event. You are watching a visitor you will never see again. And that is why every hour after closest approach matters. Now before we go deeper, if you want to stay ahead of this story as the analysis evolves, you can subscribe and turn on notifications. I track these updates like a living timeline because when the data shifts, the meaning shifts with it. Here's the first reality check. There was no threat. The flyby distance was safe. This was never a collision scenario. Nothing about the orbital geometry suggested impact. If you are here for fear, that is not what this is. What you should be here for is the anomaly, because the trajectory was predictable, but the behavior of the object has not been. And that brings us to what observers started reporting almost immediately after closest approach. A pattern, a rhythm, a repeatable fluctuation in brightness that does not look like random noise. Some people have started calling it a heartbeat. That word sounds dramatic, but the meaning is specific. It refers to a repeated cycle of brightening and dimming that shows up in the light curve, the measured brightness over time. If you have ever watched a normal comet, you know the basic story. As a comet approaches the sun, heat rises, ice sublimates, gas and dust expand outward, and the comet brightens. As it moves away, the energy input drops, and activity fades. That is the expected curve. 3i Atlas is not following it cleanly. What is being reported is not a smooth fade. It is pulses, spikes, brightening events followed by dimming, repeating in a cycle that looks structured. If this pattern holds across multiple independent instruments, then it is not just a pretty observation. It is a diagnostic. It tells you something physical is turning on and off or moving in and out of view. So what could create a heartbeat-like signal without turning this into science fiction. The most conservative explanation is rotation and active regions. Imagine the nucleus has a vent, a jet, or a patch of volatile material that releases gas more strongly than the rest. As the nucleus rotates, that active area sweeps through different angles relative to you and to the sun. When it points in the right direction, the coma brightens. When it turns away, brightness drops. That is not exotic. That is normal physics, but here's where the case becomes interesting. Observers describe not just a repeating pattern, but pulses that feel unusually strong, unusually clean, and unusually persistent for this stage of the flyby. If you see that, you have to consider more complex motion than simple rotation. A nucleus can tumble. It can spin around one axis while wobbling around another. It can shift because jets change its spin state over time. It can speed up or slow down depending on how thrust is applied. So the heartbeat may be a rotating lighthouse effect, but with an unstable body, irregular geometry, 
or changing jet strength. And that raises a deeper question. Why would an object intensify impulses after Earth's closest approach, instead of settling down into a simple decline? Now, do not misunderstand what I am saying. Earth is not heating it up. Earth is not a sun. Earth is not cooking anything. If a pulse pattern is strengthening after closest approach, you do not explain that by Earth's heat. You explain that by timing, thermal lag, internal structure, delayed release. Comets are not solid rock. They are porous. They are layered. They contain pockets. They contain channels. They contain sealed cavities where gases can build pressure. Heating does not just switch off because the object crossed a line in space. Heat moves through material over time. That means you can see delayed outgassing. You can see late activation of deeper layers. You can see jets turn on when interior pockets finally reach the point where trapped volatiles expand and escape. If that is what is happening, then the heartbeat is not a reaction to leaving. It is a delayed response to internal physics finally catching up. And there is a second piece of the evidence that matters here, the coma structure. Because brightness alone can be misleading. A coma can stay bright due to leftover dust, but structure reveals whether new material is being added. Observers have described the coma changing shape during pulses, expanding and contracting, warping in ways that track the rhythm. If that is accurate, it suggests the activity is not slow leakage. It suggests releases that are sharp enough to reshape the inner coma. That can happen when jets strengthen for short intervals, then weaken again. And if the vent geometry is consistent, the coma can develop repeating patterns that look like breathing. So now you have a picture forming, a hyperbolic interstellar object, a post flyby light curve showing rhythmic pulses, a coma that seems to change with the rhythm, and jets strong enough to shape the dust and gas environment. That already would be enough to keep scientists interested. But the story gets deeper when you move from brightness to chemistry. Because brightness tells you how much material is there. Chemistry tells you what that material is. And spectroscopy is the tool that makes that possible. Spectroscopy is simple in concept. Light passes through the coma. Molecules absorb and emit at specific wavelengths. Those patterns are fingerprints. If you detect a fingerprint, you detect the molecule. We have decades of comet spectroscopy in our own solar system. We know the common signatures, water vapor, carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, simple organics, dust-related features. But preliminary discussions around 3i Atlas have included something that stands out. Not necessarily because the molecules themselves are impossible, but because of how strong or how variable the signals appear during active phases. If pulse events coincide with shifts in spectral strength, it implies the material release during pulses is not identical to the background coma. That would support the idea of layered reservoirs inside the nucleus. Different pockets, different compositions, different release paths. And that matters, because interstellar objects can carry chemistry that reflects a different birth environment. Not alien in the sci-fi way. Alien in the literal way, not from here. Formed in a different disk, with a different temperature structure, and a different history. So if 3i Atlas shows unusual ratios of certain volatiles, or it produces strong signatures at unexpected times, that can point to something valuable. A sample of another star system's chemistry, delivered to you without a spacecraft. Now, there has been a lot of talk online about metals, including nickel, and about missing companion signatures. This is where you have to be careful. Early spectral interpretations can be noisy. Different instruments have different sensitivities. Some lines overlap. Some detections require confirmation. So the responsible way to say this is not, the comet is made of nickel. The responsible way is this. If metallic emission lines appear unusually strong in a comet coma, and if those detections are confirmed by multiple teams, then you may be seeing high temperature processes, unusual dust composition, or volatile driven release of metal bearing grains. That is still extraordinary but it stays inside physics. And then there is the visual feature that keeps showing up in discussions, the so-called anti-tail. You need to understand this because it is one of the easiest places for the internet to go off the rails. In simple diagrams, a comet tail points away from the sun because solar radiation pressure pushes dust outward and the solar wind pushes ionized gas outward. So when people see a feature that looks like it points toward the sun, they think it breaks physics. Sometimes it does not. Sometimes an anti-tail is a perspective effect. If Earth crosses the plane of the comet's orbit, you can see a dust trail aligned in such a way that it appears to point sunward, even though the dust is still behaving normally. It is geometry. However, if the anti-tail-like structure is narrow, 
persistent, and behaves like a collimated stream, then it becomes more interesting, because a tight beam is harder to explain with simple dust trail geometry. So what you do here is not jump to conclusions. What you do is ask, does the feature match orbit plane geometry? Does it appear only near certain viewing angles? Does it fade as Earth's perspective changes? Does it shift in a way consistent with dust dynamics? If it fails those tests, then you look at jets. Because a jet can eject material in many directions, including partially sunward, depending on nucleus geometry and rotation state. The sun will still act on that material over time, but a fresh jet can create a temporary structure that looks wrong at first glance. So now let's zoom out and connect the pieces. What is the simplest coherent interpretation that matches everything without turning into fantasy? Here it is. 3i Atlas is an interstellar comet-like object with active venting. The venting is not declining smoothly post-approach. Instead, it appears modulated by rotation or tumbling, producing rhythmic brightness pulses. Those pulses reshape the inner coma and possibly drive visible structures in the tail. The chemistry may vary across pulses, consistent with layered internal reservoirs. And the object's motion may show measurable non-gravitational effects because jets act like thrusters. That explanation is already wild, and it is already enough to challenge simplified models of interstellar comet behavior. Because before we had this kind of data, interstellar objects were mostly detected late, tracked briefly, and lost. We did not have dense time series monitoring across a close approach window. Now, we do. And it is forcing a shift. Instead of treating interstellar visitors as comets but faster, you have to treat them as their own category, with internal structures and compositions, that may not match what you grew up learning. Now let's talk about the non-gravitational piece, because this is where the story becomes measurable in a very specific way. When a comet vents gas, the gas leaves at high speed. The nucleus experiences reaction force, that is thrust. Even tiny thrust, applied continuously, changes trajectory. So when NASA fits an orbit, it does not just solve for gravity. It includes extra parameters that represent jet-driven acceleration. If those parameters remain significant after perihelion, it means the object is still actively venting. If they change in sync with pulses, it suggests jets are not just present, but pulsing, and strong enough that you can see their effect in orbital residuals. And this is where the words natural engine make sense. A comet can behave like a weak spacecraft without being artificial, simply because mass loss creates thrust. But if thrust is unusually efficient, unusually directional, or unusually sustained at distances where you would expect lower activity, then you have a legitimate scientific puzzle, not aliens, a puzzle. And in science, a puzzle is gold because puzzles lead to new models, and new models lead to new predictions, and new predictions lead to new discoveries. So what happens now? Here's the uncomfortable truth. We are in a race against distance. As 3i Atlas moves outward, it gets fainter. The coma spreads, the signals weaken. Eventually, ground-based observatories lose the ability to track fine structure, and the object becomes a faint point among billions. That means the highest value window is now, the days immediately after closest approach, when the object is still bright enough for high cadence monitoring, but far enough from Earth that viewing geometry is stable. This is when you test whether the heartbeat is real. This is when you measure whether the pulse period remains stable or drifts. This is when you see whether the coma shells form. This is when you find out whether the anti-tail feature is geometry or an active jet. This is when you determine whether chemical signatures vary across the pulse cycle. So the question is not, what do you want it to be? The question is, what does the data keep repeating? across independent teams. Because if the heartbeat holds across multiple observatories, and if the period is stable, then you can estimate rotation time scales. If the period changes, you can infer torque. If the pulse amplitude changes, you can infer vent evolution. If the coma shape changes predictably, you can infer jet geometry. If spectra vary across pulses, you can map composition differences tied to different vent sources. This is how you turn mystery into measurement. And that is why today matters. December 20th, 2025 is not the day it passed. It is the day the analysis begins. It is the day you stop looking at the object as a dot and start treating it like a system, a rotating, venting, evolving body that came from another star. Now, there is one more layer to this story, and it is the layer that makes it emotionally intense even when nothing is threatening Earth. 
You are watching something that is leaving forever. You are watching a visitor that traveled through interstellar space for an amount of time your brain cannot truly picture. It crossed star neighborhoods. It survived radiation fields. It survived the emptiness between suns. It entered our system by chance, or by gravity's invisible map, and it gave you a brief window. And now the window is closing, so when you see pulses in its brightness, you are not just seeing a weird light curve. You are seeing the only way it can speak to you at this distance. Light and gas, brightness and chemistry. A rhythm that might be rotation, event, a tumbling body, or a structural instability. And the reason this has scientists paying attention is simple. This is not just a comet doing comet things. This is a test case for an entire category of objects we are going to start finding more often. Because sky surveys are improving fast. As instruments become more sensitive, interstellar visitors stop being once in a century events. They become detectable traffic. And once you see traffic, you need a playbook. 3i Atlas might be the event that forces that playbook to exist. So here's what you should watch for in the next updates. 1. Does the pulse period remain consistent across days? 2. Does the pulse amplitude change as it moves outward? 3. Do we see new shells or arcs in the inner coma, indicating discrete outbursts? 4. Does the anti-tail-like feature behave like geometry or like active ejection? 5. Do non-gravitational terms in the orbital fits remain significant? And do they evolve? 6. Do spectral signatures vary with the pulse, suggesting layered internal reservoirs? Those six questions are the difference between cool space story and model-breaking science. And until the next data drops, the honest answer is not certainty. The honest answer is that 3i Atlas is still revealing itself. It already gave you a safe flyby. Now it is giving you the harder gift. Evidence that your simple expectations about interstellar comets might be incomplete. So if you are watching this story with me, understand what the next update could mean. It could mean the heartbeat fades, activity declines, and the object becomes quiet. That would still be valuable. It would define the end of the active phase and help constrain internal thermal models. Or it could mean the heartbeat persists longer than expected, with pulses that remain strong as the object moves outward. That would point to deeper volatile reservoirs, or vent geometries that stay active far from the sun. Or it could mean the pulse pattern changes, drifts, fragments, or becomes chaotic. That could signal rotational instability, evolving vents, or structural stress building in the nucleus. Any of those outcomes teaches us something we did not know yesterday, and that is why NASA flagged this object so closely. Not because it threatens Earth, because it threatens assumptions. And if you care about the real frontier of science, that is exactly the kind of threat you want. If you want to stay ahead of the next update, subscribe, because the next data set will not just show you where 3i Atlas is, it will tell you what it is doing, and the moment it stops doing it, the story ends, forever. So while it is still close enough to measure, while the heartbeat is still visible in the light curve, while the coma still carries a chemical fingerprint you can read, this is the time to pay attention. This is December 20th, 2025. 3i Atlas is leaving, but the evidence is finally arriving. And what that evidence says so far is simple. This object is not going quietly, not yet. 